Hi everyone, today let's talk about what forces are pushing the markets around, and then of course we have a ton of data and charts to go over this weekend. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel, and let's get started. So let's take a look at the macro here with what forces are pushing on the US economy right now. There is a bit of a tug of war going on, so let's get into it here. Inflation, consumer sentiment starting to wane a little bit. The consumer, we've been seeing that slow down a little bit. Corporate profits also slowing, but we're hoping for a reacceleration in the second half of the year. They also mentioned falling home prices as well as unemployment ticking higher. That's one that's really got me concerned. That'll be interesting to see at the end of this week if that steps up to 4.2. And that continues to be a trend above the four handle. Definitely concerning. And then, of course, we got some indicators here. The Morgan Stanley cycle indicator stuck in downturn. The SAM roll, we've talked about that on the channel as well, indicating recession potential there. Commercial real estate has been struggling quite a lot, which is weighing heavily on those regional banks. Those have recovered quite a bit since those couple of banks went bankrupt, but high interest rates still weighing on them. Credit card defaults and auto loan defaults have spiked, also quite concerning. And then there's some riskier corporate debt out there surging similarly with those high interest rates. They can't refinance at the same low rates that they have been. So that's a lot of bad stuff. Let's talk about some of the good stuff. A lot of corporations were able to refinance their debt at low interest rates during COVID. So some of that is still keeping companies afloat with that cheap debt. There's also some fiscal stimulus out there. Roughly 20% of that stimulus is still coming from the government. They are continuing to spend at aggressive rates, running huge deficits, which does prop up the economy, at least in the short term. And now we're waiting to see if we're actually going to get that easing of financial conditions. The Fed continues to say they are done hiking rates, and they are hinting at some potential cuts at the end of the year. Markets really want one in September, and if we don't get it, I think it's going to be quite bearish. And as those interest rates start to come down, stocks are going to be quite a bit more valuable since it'll be harder to get those fixed rates of return which forces will prevail can these excessive savings cheap financing and fiscal stimulus offset the impact of those higher interest rates and they mention here this time is probably not different high interest rates usually affect the economy negatively and push into recession soft landing potentially happening right now does seem unlikely Interest rates are a slow and unpredictable tool, which is why it is so challenging to make those soft landings actually happen. They say maybe this time is different, and maybe it is, but it's hard to say right now. And then the other concern is while inflation might have topped out, prices have remained higher. They've come down a little bit in certain sections, mainly in vehicles and a little bit in home prices, but they are still expensive and that is weighing on the consumer. So of course, let's give some actionable advice here. Of course, not financial advice, but if you do think it's going to be a hard landing, now is probably the time to get out. We're going to see those cuts, usually during the first six months of cuts. That's when you see some of the best returns. So you could try to ride this a little bit longer, but realistically, any of the gains that you see over that time period are likely to come in, especially if we get into a recessionary environment. And it's also a good time to lock in those high interest rates on those fixed income tools. 5% is a healthy return, and that is just about what you can get right now on the short end of the yield curve. And then, of course, stay diversified. You can get into those small caps right now, which are historically undervalued relative to the rest of the market. And that's probably why they've been outperforming so aggressively. Moving over to the Fear and Greed Index, we finished the week at a 45. A week ago, we were at a 49. We did have a pretty substantial dip during that period, though. You can see 57 down to a 40, and then we're back to that 45 number. So pretty interesting move, definitely concerning. We can see that consistent lower low here on momentum, getting close to that 125 EMA, sitting down at 52.27. Strength still hanging in there in greed, breadth in neutral, which continues to gain here despite the weakness in markets, really getting driven down by that tech trade. Put call ratio still in fear as we continue to climb. Once we start to get into that one area, maybe as high here as the 1.1 area, that's going to be quite bearish for the put call ratio and bullish for equities and then looking at volatility again higher highs and higher lows i still think that's going to continue this week at some point and then safe haven demand extreme fear hovering around that zero number just below it and then junk bond demand really hasn't moved it doesn't seem to be really helping us with markets right now 
Moving over to the AAII survey, as you would expect, the bulls did pull back pretty substantially. We saw pretty much peak bulls there at 52.7. That's about as high as it goes. 52.9 was our one-year high, and that's as high as I've ever seen. So super bullish we were last week, and then as you would expect, that trended down this week because of the down move we saw. Neutral did increase slightly, but really the bear is coming back into alignment with historical averages. So nothing crazy on the bear side yet, and you would expect this to continue to shift into that bull section until we see a pretty heavy demand on the bear side and then that's when you start to get more bullish as a contrarian metric. Moving over to seasonality, we got this big down move. It came a little bit late, so we'll see if we get this kind of grinding price action back to flat. I don't think it's going to get all the way back to flat, but we are relatively bullish here into the end of the month. And then looking at August here, you can see historically a weak period, generally bearish on the normal years, but during election years, it can be quite a bit more bullish, so we'll see if that follows through. August, historically weak but could be bullish. And then looking at the calendar, expectation is bearish for Monday, bullish for Tuesday, and then we get a ton of data on FOMC on Wednesday, as well as Chicago PMI. And then getting our first look at the August calendar, you can see typically a bad period. August is the worst Dow and second worst S&P and NASDAQ month, so consider that. Thursday, first trading day of the month, consider generally bearish. And then you can also see ISM numbers in there, unemployment rate coming in next week as well. So tons and tons of data and not a great time to be a bull trader. Moving over to that earnings calendar for next week, we have McDonald's, Well Tower, starting to get some of those real estate companies, Semiconductor, not a ton for Monday. And then Tuesday, we get Microsoft, obviously the big one, PNG, fairly interesting, Merck Co., AMD, Pfizer, Starbucks, they had a little bit of a pop here recently, American Tower, interesting real estate company, I own some of them. And really another thing I just want to highlight here is all of the different companies, and these are only the biggest companies coming out on Tuesday here. I'm sure there are many, many more smaller companies. And then for Wednesday, you got Meta, MasterCard, T-Mobile, Qualcomm, Arm Holdings, that's going to be interesting. Boeing, they could put out something interesting. Allstate, Garmin, I just like Garmin, they're not that interesting. Vici Property, definitely a good real estate company to look at. eBay, for that consumer confidence, as well as Etsy. And then looking at Thursday, another massive one, Apple, Amazon, Intel, ConocoPhillips. Again, tons of other smaller companies, Monster Beverage, Fun to Watch, Hershey's Company. And then Clorox, consumer staple, pretty expensive consumer staple, but always interesting. And then Friday, we start to get some of those heavier names on the oil and gas side with ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil, Chevron, Church and Dwight, big consumer staples company, also could be interesting, and that'll round it out for the week. Moving over to the economic calendar, nothing for Monday. Tuesday, we get GDP for the Eurozone, consumer confidence at 10 o'clock, Jolt's job openings at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. Then for Wednesday, CPI for the Eurozone, ADP non-farm employment change, pending home sales, Chicago PMI, and of course, the FOMC decision is on that Wednesday. So, the expectation is a hold. I think that we are likely to get a hold. But the big thing is, are they going to signal a cut for that September meeting? It is coming up quick. And if they don't start to signal a potential cut during that meeting, I think markets are going to pull back pretty dramatically. So we'll see how it plays. Markets really want that cut, and it is priced in right now. And even with that, we've seen markets fall. So interesting there. And then looking at Thursday, initial jobless claims, some ISM data here manufacturing PMI, manufacturing prices, as well as global U.S. manufacturing PMI. And then for Friday, we get all of that unemployment data. So it's bound to be a massive week, tons of data, tons of earnings. Markets are going to be volatile, so stay agile out there, and hopefully we get some good numbers. Unemployment rate expected to stay flat, but if this continues to tick up, I do think that that's going to signal more weakness to the markets, but also potentially bring that rate cut in September. Moving over to Max Payne, not a ton of options in the market, but you can see a huge put wall down at 480. I don't think that's going to have a huge impact on markets. Some puts here at 540. 
Not huge numbers this week, only 544,000 options in the market. Put call ratio pretty low here for the S&Ps right now. Call wall, 552, really not a ton of information. We're right in the middle of the range, and honestly, this could go either way. And then looking at the Q's max pain, I did want to highlight something here. So you can see price way below that max pain number. Total options right now, just about the same, but put call ratio super, super low at 0.67. So there's still quite a bit of bulls in the market, honestly, to me, that says it's probably going lower. You can see call walls here at 485, 490, and then a huge call wall here at 500. So lots of people selling calls into this week's options expiration. And again, this says markets look a lot bearish on the NASDAQ compared to the SPY and in general. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the weekly view, you can see the previous down move was three weeks in a row, and that third week was the most violent at 3% down, and it does seem like we're going to get at least one more candle, 21 EMA sitting at 52.95, you also have a trend line there. I don't think we'll get to that third lowest trend line. Right now, we just tested the first one, really. So I think the second lowest is certainly in play around 53.38. Momentum swinging to bearish still. Volume swinging to bearish. RSI breaking down. No surprises. Everything does still look bearish. And then looking at that 55 EMA and that previous move, again, we did break through all of those levels. We're right here at the 55. Doesn't mean we can't get just a little bit of a swing high here, up to maybe 5,500, 5,550 touch that zone and then we get the continuation lower similarly to what you saw here you got a little bit of down move consolidation and then the bigger drop it's not quite the same setup because you can see we're broken well below that 21 ema we did see a step towards bullish on the macd which usually means you're going to get at least a little bit of a move but it should be relatively short-lived again 5539 is that 21 ema and then looking at levels to the upside, 55.12 here on the SPY, right in that same zone. 9 EMA sitting there, 550.12 sitting right here, sitting in that same zone as the 9 EMA, which is at 550.66, which is still a decent move. That's about $6 of upside from here. Touch that zone, and then we get the continuation lower. And if we were to get into that 525 area, that would be the lows from this consolidation in June. And then the level there, 524.23. So if we did get a move from there after hitting the 21 EMA, EMA, that would be about another 5% down move. And overall, top to bottom, that would be about seven and a quarter. So pretty decent pullback, but wouldn't change the overall medium to long term structure. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see that two days of down move after hitting the upper ATR. ATR support right around that 522.26 level. You can see on that previous down move, we didn't get quite that low. But if this is a move more similar to the one back here from the end of July to October, that was a much more significant move, almost to that lowest ATR band, which after that initial down move was basically flat. So if we were to hit that same low on that ATR band, that would be around 485.74. I don't know if we're going to see that big of a move. That would be almost $100 of downside. It did take a long time to happen, like we said end of July to end of October, many, many months of downside price action, but we'll see how it plays. This is still very much an uptrend, could be a short-term pullback to that midline, which is still sitting around that 528 area, just a few dollars higher than what we've been talking about. And then like I mentioned, 522.26 is that ATR support. And then looking at that daily chart, you can see previous move, hit the lowest ATR, and then you did get a couple more days of downside. Almost touched the ATR on the 25th, did come up just a little bit short. So you should expect at least a couple more days of downside hit the lowest ATR band, which is currently sitting at 534.63. And then as that grinds lower, that could get into that 525 to 527 area. Same zone we've been talking about, momentum bearish. But again, could see one, maybe two more days of consolidation, slightly bullish. And then we get the continuation to that zone. And then I would expect a medium term bounce if it's going to happen, something like this, where you get a push back up to that upper ATR. Either way, we're not quite there yet and still expecting a little bit more bearishness over the coming days. Moving over to the NASDAQ here on the weekly, you can see we took out this trend line here, closed below it, just barely missed that 21 EMA. 
Low of the week was 18,721, the 21 EMA at 18,692, so just barely missed it. Let's go ahead and extend out this trend line here. So trend support sitting just below that around 18,485. So again, same thesis, still expecting a little bit more of a dip low. So based on this, you could argue maybe we're going to touch that trend before we get a bounce. Momentum, step to bearish here, RSI continues to break down. It's not very different compared to what we saw here. We did get one more week of bearish momentum despite having a bullish week and then a bullish follow through. So something to consider there. And then looking at that daily chart here, you can see the inside candle. That's what we're looking at for at least a little bit of a push. 9 EMA at 19,543, which from here on the daily chart would be about a 2.5% up move. And then looking at it on the NASDAQ, similar thesis, 9 EMA at 475.60. And then you have some levels in there. So seems like we're going to get at least to that 472 area. We'll see what happens there. And then the 21 sitting all the way up at 484.68. I don't think we're going to get that high. But it would stand a reason to get to that 472, maybe even as high as 477.69, which is this level here. Momentum did step back towards bullish on that Friday, so we'll see how it plays, but it does look bullish to me. Obviously, these levels in here need to break. As they break, it will look a little bit more bullish. Moving over to that tasty chart, you can see I bought shares right at the end of the week, basically at the close there in terms of pricing, looking for a push up. Eight-week moving average is sitting there at 473.60. That would be about $10 higher from here so that's the move get a retest of the level and then we'll see if we get another down move ATR support 443.67 again I do think we'll get there eventually I just think we're extended here in the short term and you can see that last down move got to that first ATR band here and that ATR band now is trading at 439.46. So that's another zone right next to the ATRs, right in here. You can also see that 34 EMA sitting there, 441.16. Interesting zone, probably where we're going ultimately, but that doesn't mean we can't get a short-term bounce. And then looking at the daily chart again, you can see we are extended. We're already at that 89 EMA. We're already at the ATR band. Doesn't mean we can't grind along here, but usually once you get here, you do start to see little bits of bounce. Hit this here, got the inside candle, got some sideways choppy to upward price action. And then we did see follow through on that move. So something to consider, still bearish conditions with that ATR resistance sitting at 491.57. I don't think we're going to get there this week, but understand we're pretty extended here on the daily chart. Moving over to the Russell, I think we're going to get to this trend line here this week. The trend line is sitting at 227.98, so about $3 higher from current price. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish, we're almost overbought, so we'll see how it plays. Should expect at least one more week of push or at least a wick to that level. So still bullish conditions, waiting to see what happens happens at that next level and you can see it here on the daily chart almost touched it pulled back to trend held the trend and now we're pushing again if you get the island reversal here that would be concerning for sure so we did get the gap up did hold the level if it gaps down on the monday that's a concern for sure you can see we're right at this level here from tuesday the 16th important level wicked it on friday if we start to see some pullback that's concerning you can also see there's pretty substantial rsi divergence Peak RSI was 80.85, current RSI 66.88, and we are basically flat on the closing basis here. So definitely some weakness on strength, which could be an indicator that we're going to see that one more push. Hit the level 226.02, the trend line 228.08 here on the daily chart, touch those levels, and then we'll start to see some rejection after this very powerful move. Again, still very bullish conditions. I would expect higher lows to get bought up but that doesn't mean we can't see a short-term down move. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see we're almost at that upper ATR band. Upper ATR is at 226.89, so again, about another $2 or so of upside potential. Momentum still bullish, nothing changing here. And then looking at that daily chart, you can see just how extended we were, way above that upper ATR, continues to grind higher. That seems to be resistance, 224.34, and we closed at 224.21, so grinding along that upper price action, this was more of a pullback back in time held the 8 EMA so everything here still says bullish the question is how big of a resistance is that trend line going to be on the trading view charts Moving over to the Dow, positive week here, 0.75. Looks like it's pushing back to this trend line. We touched it two weeks ago, rejected pretty heavily from there, got a continuation up, trend sitting at about 412, right in that zone, momentum bullish, RSI still bullish. So you would expect to get to 412, which is about $6 more of upside, about a percent and a half. Overall, this still looks bullish, and this is an all-time high close for the Dow. So 
still everything looks quite good. And then you can see it here on the daily chart. Hit the trend, hold this higher low here at the 21 EMA. Love to see that 21 holding through a big wick. Rejected here, but still held the bullish candle. Gapped and rallied strong candle on the Friday, especially with a lot of the weakness that we were seeing across the board. Really throughout the week, the Dow was hanging in there better than most of them. And the Dow looks good here, at least into the Monday session. Moving over to the equal weighted S&Ps, you can see we are right at the level, right at these wick highs from the end of March, beginning of April time frame. This is a clear breakout, broke out three weeks ago, held the level, wicked that level this last week, and then rallied 0.8%. Need to see it break that level and push. Seems like it's going to do it. Momentum swinging to bullish, volume coming through, RSI looks strong. Everything here says that the equal weights are going to go higher. And then you can see that structure, huge move, similar to the Russell, pulled back, looked a little bit weaker than the Russell, and then you can see similar to the Dow, same candle pattern, big wick high, rejected, gap and go to the level, need to see it push above there to continue this bullish run into new all-time highs. Moving over to the ratio, SPY Russell and NASDAQ SPY, you can see three weeks in a row we've seen massive Russell outperformance. We had been at some pretty high levels. I thought we were going to get to that 278, and then we got that massive down week on the second week of July and now we've had two subsequent weeks closed on the low below that is all the way down at 231 we'll see how that plays momentum super bearish RSI super bearish still seems like the Russell is going to be the best place to be over the coming weeks and then looking at the Nasdaq spy a little bit different story here so we're in this channel we've been in it for a while we got here mid-May we've been chopping here Hit this upper bound, three weeks of down move, and now we're at the bottom. Interesting. This is the zone where you would expect to see a little bit of bounce, a little bit of NASDAQ outperformance potentially. But if this structure breaks, then we could see a push down to the 200. That's sitting down at 331 or so. Momentum, still very bearish. RSI, still very bearish. So we'll see how it plays. Based on these indicators, you would expect it to break, but this is a critical zone. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply, you can see those two down weeks. We are at a critical level. We're also at that 9 EMA. That's at 2607. We're at 2606. So critical zone wicked the level at 2591. We'll see how it plays here. If this breaks, the trend line is sitting down at 2540. So we'll continue to see a little bit more down move. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. Obviously, it's going to follow the same structure as the S&Ps, but it does have that caveat of the M2 money supply. So we'll see how it plays. I think the trend is likely if that breaks, do have some next lower levels and everything here still says bearish to me. Moving over to the MAG7, three down candles, not a good candle setup. Hit the 21 EMA, hit the level 249.41. Interesting zone, could bounce from here. Again, when you see three bear candles, typically see a little bit of a pullback and then dip low. Rallies usually met with selling after those three bear candles. Not a ton of volume on that move, especially compared to the volume we've been seeing on the MAG7. So not a ton of conviction yet, but this momentum indicator to me says that this should have more downside. Next level would be 230.52 if this zone broke, and that would be the consolidation lows from back here, mid-February as well as mid-April. Moving over to stocks that moved this week, we got Aventor and Bristol Myers. Aventor, big up week, 22.78, right to that 144 EMA. We'll see if it can hold that level. 200 sitting just behind it, 27.41. Obviously, huge volume on this move. Momentum swinging to bullish, you would expect continuation. And then looking at Bristol Myers, this has been in a very consistent downtrend. It was trading around the $80 price range, and then we fell all the way down to 39. So we got cut in half, and now we got an up week of around 80 18 and a half percent momentum bullish RSI bullish this was on earnings so again you would expect some up move held the close above the trend maybe we retest the trend and then get a continuation higher but the 144 is sitting up there around the 63 range which is right in the middle of this consolidation I don't think it's unusual to think that we can probably get back to that level once we see that 55 EMA break at 51.38 moving over to Apple and Tesla you can see two weeks in a row of down move momentum swinging to bearish RSI it's right at the SMA if it's going to hold, we'll probably see it this week. If not, it's going to cut right through there and break down. Probably see a retest and then a continuation lower. So looking for that trend change on the RSI. But right now, it's holding the trend, holding the level. 
could absolutely bounce from here. And then Microsoft, three down weeks in a row. That is not what you want to see. So three in a row, not a great candle pattern. Usually you do see some relief rally after those three down candles, but usually that is met with selling and then you see more downside to come. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. It's also here in no man's land. It's broken all the short term EMAs. Everything says it should be bearish down to that 413.36 level, at least in my opinion. It is at these consolidation highs, but I had the level at 429.88 and it has broken that level on a closing basis. So to me, Microsoft looks a lot weaker than Apple, but both of them don't look great. Moving over to Tesla and Nvidia, you can see both of these had a pretty rough week. Tesla down 8.1%, Nvidia 4.13. Nvidia hitting that trend line here, we talked about it. That was the price target. We overthrew it to the level at 106.64. The low of the week was 106.30, so definitely touched it. Momentum is still bearish. RSI still bearish. And then similarly on Tesla, three down weeks in a row. Momentum stepping to bearish. I do still think this is going to get bought up, but I could see a little bit more downside, maybe a bigger wick rejection. And then we start to see a bit of a turn back to the upside. This is on the catalyst of earnings, so maybe we don't see some buyers come in the same way you typically typically would when it's just technicals. There are some fundamentals underlying this move. Either way, 214 held. We haven't touched that level yet. You could argue that that is a buy zone, 55 EMA, 9 EMA, going to trend into that area next week. But if that starts to break down, 203 is the next one. And then 197.75 below that. And then NVIDIA back here, you can see the next level, if this zone was to break, would be 95.74. This is still very much an uptrend. I don't think we're going to see a major breakdown or a change in structure on NVIDIA. Again, doesn't mean you can't see a little bit of a wick here, but eventually I would expect this to turn back to the upside just based on the overall structure. Moving over to Meta and Amazon, you can see Meta three weeks in a row down. Same with Amazon. Amazon looking a little bit better. 181.41 is the level. We have not closed below that on a weekly chart. Structurally, it's definitely changing. You can see the momentum has faded. Bearish momentum here, RSI continuing to make lower lows. Eventually, I do think this is going to roll over. This seems to be the top left shoulder head, right shoulder forming here potentially. And then Nvidia. This looks like a double top to me. You could argue argue that it closed above it here so structurally you do have a high technically higher high but then we gave it all back here and we're looking to test this midpoint so far 45407 has held tested it this week overthrew it pretty substantially and until that breaks overall this is still sideways consolidation i do think we'll get a test of that 55 ema at some point which is trading all the way down at 400.61 moving over to staples and discretionaries grinding price action on staples but technically that's four weeks in a row of bullishness here. So Staples continuing to show strength, and this is a new weekly high close relative to this previous high from May 13th. So overall, still headed to that 79.90 level, still trending higher, and everything still looks bullish on Staples. Whereas discretionaries, we've broken down to the trend, established this trend here, grinded along that level, testing it again. 180.10 has been a very important level. Overthrew it substantially, retested it here, momentum bearish, RSI bearish. So based on indicators, you would expect this to break, but on technicals, still potential for it to hold that zone. Moving over to transports and staples here, you can actually see a pretty similar structure. We had a peak right in here, moved lower through that period here, and now you can see transports continuing to hold higher lows. The structure looks pretty decent, hit the 21 EMA two weeks in a row. Still pretty bearish on the week at 1.7, but it held the level 64.89. Need that level to hold, want to see it continue to swing. Momentum swinging to bullish, RSI right at the SMA after a break, so needs to hold this and then you can see volume coming through ramping on this up move so overall transports looks okay you could also argue low higher low but on the flip side of that you kind of have a left shoulder head right shoulder here forming so either way watching this one here want to see it hold and push if we're going to continue this bull run across markets versus getting an overall change of structure for the indices and then oil and gas this is a pretty non-correlated market, but you can see that 55 EMA continues to hold in here. It's at 144.07, big wick down, tested the trend, big wick rejection, momentum swinging to bullish, consolidation. I still think this is going to swing higher. I would have preferred to see it close above 145.92. So technically we are below that level, but the 55 EMA is what I'm watching there, continuing to get strong buyers in this zone. 
I think we're going to get a swing higher next week. Moving over to oil and gold, you can see oil has been in this wedge consolidation, holding higher lows and lower highs. Starting to get close to that peak, so we'll see what happens. Are we going to get a push higher up to that 93 area in this previous high? Or is this structurally going to break and push back down into the 70s? Momentum right now, bearish, but again, we're in that zone where you would expect buyers to come in. And RSI basically been flat during this consolidation, and it's right in the middle there, so... Nothing crazy. Again, this is a zone of support. You would expect it to push higher if this structure is going to continue, understanding that that peak is coming here within a couple of weeks. And then gold. So this pushed down pretty dramatically, hit the 9 EMA, hit VWAP, held a higher low though, gapped higher on Friday. And if this structurally starts to swing back up to that 225 area, I do think that this is probably going to be when we break. If we get another test of that zone, a little bit of volume behind it, get to see a swing. Momentum and RSI are still technically bearish here. But remember, price action is king, and it still looks a little bit bullish to me. Moving over to Riot and Marathon, both of these had pretty bearish weeks. Riot holding a higher low inside candle. To me, that's a little bit more bullish than what we saw here on Marathon. Fully engulfing, momentum swinging to bearish. RSI could hold, but this is pretty interesting, right? So the structure here on Marathon, I like it a little bit better. You can see a low, higher low structurally at the 200 held that level held a higher low even on this wick rejection 9 ema vwap 21 all of this zone got tested finished a little bit higher off that level we also had the trump talks at the bitcoin convention so that could give this a bit of a swing here either way structurally you're grinding higher got a bit of a breakout did give some of it back but i still like it to push similarly here with riot we had the downtrend we broke the downtrend even if you move this out here to there he still broke this downtrend held the level wicked the highly traded zone momentum bullish rsi bullish again both of these still seem like they're going to get a swing up to me just looks like a slight pullback and you should look for that continuation up to that next resistance moving over to 20 and 50 day breadth 20 day breadth wicked that level saw a bounce from there still bullish momentum still bullish rsi still think we're going to swing to that 86.50 area and then looking at 50 day breadth much more bullish fully engulfed the previous candle closed above the level and this is really what i'm kind of banking on as the next potential move i think 50 day breadth is set to go higher at least test that next level maybe even higher at this previous high 50 day breadth continues to show strength 20 day still trending higher but showed a little bit of weakness on the week Moving over to 200 day breadth, still consolidating, tested the 55, rallied up three weeks in a row of bullishness, momentum swinging to bullish, RSI swinging to bullish. So this is why I still think in the short term, we're going to see that swing. Everything on breadth indicator still says bullishness to come. That doesn't mean the MAG7 is going to be able to carry the SPY or the NASDAQ higher, but the Russell still looks good. The Dow probably still going to do okay. And if this zone here breaks at 7604, we could see a strong push back up to that 90, 91 area. Don't always get there. In fact, it's pretty rare on 200 day breadth to get there. Last time we were there is all the way back in June of 21. And then that was the precursor to this very substantial down move. So we'll see how it plays. Critical zone here on 200 day breadth. Moving over to the dollar here, you can see it's been in this wedge. We've been watching this lower trend line here. And you can see this previous high marks the top, marks the top. And then technically we've broken this structure. Looks like we're probably going to retest here. I still think we're going to get at least one more swing back to bullish. That trend line resistance would be up around 105. And then we could potentially see the rejection. Momentum still technically bearish. RSI still technically bearish. So again, short term test resistance and then continue to see that swing down potentially. Or maybe we're just going to continue to consolidate out of this formation. It's hard to say but the expectation is a retest and a break. Moving over to yields, two year, big down week, 2.83, and then the 10 year down, just 1.11%. Both of these closing pretty close to the low, momentum on both of them, still bearish, RSI still bearish. You can see that two year falling significantly faster than the 10 year. I do think this is going to continue to come in, maybe down to that four and a quarter, and then kind of hold this zone. That's where we should be in about two years, maybe even a little lower, four to four and a quarter. But the 10 year needs to start to get back into those normalized conditions think it's probably going to hold this zone maybe even trend back higher towards that four and a half zone and then we'll see what happens from there usually markets get a lot more dangerous once you see that renormalization of yields Moving over to JNK and TLT you can see TLT JNK holding a new high 
above all of these consolidation highs, big close, positive on the week, still looking for that 95, 61 level. But this is three weeks in a row we've been above all the EMAs. Only thing you have above here is that 200 SMA. But look at this structure, big consolidation, big break. You would expect this to continue to swing to bullish RSI as well as momentum, both very bullish here. So JNK showing a lot of strength that should be bullish for the Russell and continuing to see that breadth widen. And then TLT here, big wick to these levels, still closed above all of these short-term EMAs and VWAP. Momentum still technically bullish, still hanging in this zone. Volume coming through here and a decent close above the 92.82 level. So everything here still says that this should continue to go. But if we do start to see that 10-year rally back into the four and a half area, we could see this start to break down as a potential for a lower high, lower high, lower high type setup. Moving over to volatility, you can see we did close technically bearish after wicking these highs got very close to the 20 zone 19.36 was the high for the week still think we're probably going to touch that 200 sma similar to here i think we need to have that kind of culmination top let's go ahead and extend that out get into this zone which is right around the 20 level momentum and rsi still bullish here so one more week potentially give a big wick to that level at some point this week and then start to see that bigger move down we'll see how it plays and even once you start to see that bigger move down i think we could still potentially hold a higher low and then see another second spike here seems like volatility is starting to catch some legs even with the big wicks to both directions it still held most of those gains moving over to my accounts here you can see i did lose a bunch of money Still just slightly less than markets. I do compare myself to the NASDAQ, which fell about 2.5%. I did lose just barely less than that, but I should have lost much less. Traded really poorly on the big down week, so that wasn't great. In terms of positions, still have my covered call on the Russell. Still like it. Probably should have sold another put here in my main account on the Russell. And then looking at the queues, I am bullish going into the Monday. So I do think we're going to get an, a continuation pop on the Monday. I'm not trying to hold that position indefinitely. I'm going to be watching it closely. I think we could get one maybe two days of push out of it before we start to see a bigger breakdown still watching for that bigger move down i don't think we're done quite yet and then here oil and gas stocks 143 for about a dollar bullish day on friday i think that's going to continue as well so short term bullish on the queues medium term oil and gas stocks and the russell let me know down in the comment section what you think about the current forces on the economy. Will the recessionary forces win and we're going to push into a bigger downturn? Or will we actually pull off the soft landing and there's more upside to come? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.